On today's show, we discuss Damian Lillard's uncertain future in Portland and how it relates to the Sixers. Also, we get some of the answers we've been seeking for the last six months. And is this the perfect opportunity for Daryl Morey to strike a deal with the Blazers? We got it all coming up. Let's go. Perfect. Perfect. What is going on, everybody? RB here. Welcome back on into the show. Like always, hit the thumbs up for your boy. It really helps out the content. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell so you get all the notifications anytime we drop content or go live. We had to split this one into two parts today. If you have not watched the previous video or listened to the previous episode here on the channel, be sure to do that um, as it probably will provide better context as to the crazy past couple of days. We have a lot more news and coverage to get into today. So earlier today, following up on what happened yesterday, which was absolutely a whirlwind, Adrian Wojnarowski pretty much made the, the situation even more severe today when it comes to the NBA Twitter sphere. That's right. He puts out this piece this afternoon discussing Damian Lillard and his future and, and all the uncertainty surrounding the situation the most complicating factor in Portland's GM search, Damian Lillard's desire to be extended and become the NBA's highest paid player in his mid-30s. We will get into this. There are honestly three things that you need to take away from this article and where it all stands right now. As I mentioned on uh, the last video, you know we expected Portland to kind of be in this situation, but we did not expect it to happen this quick where their GM gets fired and their coaches pretty much calling out the players, and there's a whole lot of things going on here. Um, it could take a downturn very quickly. It seems like it is, and with the NBA trade deadline coming up in a few months, you know there are going to be even more chatters about this as we proceed forward. But anyway, getting into the piece, the first thing that sticks out that absolutely has the Sixers world going crazy today is this little tidbit. So in the article, Woj writes, in the past year, Lillard and his camp have been thwarted on leverage plays, so they've been denied opportunities. Number one, Jason Kidd being hired as coach. We know that. They went with Chauncey Billups. Then he had all the allegations that had to get cleared. But here's what you have to listen to. Trading C.J. McCollum and four first-round picks, 4-2-5. So essentially, in the, in the offseason this past year, with you know, amidst everything, in the midst of everything going on, you know, the Olympics and the coaching allegations, and then now the GM and stuff. Damian Lillard, as we reported on the last video, wants to play with two fives so bad for some reason. He was willing to have his camp go to the Portland Trailblazers and tell them that they should offer CJ McCollum and four first round picks for two five. Most of all, they lost the confidence that the Blazers had a top basketball executive and ownership willing to give Lillard the highest single season pay in the league history at $55 million in 2027, which we will get into in a second. Uh, but talking about the C.J. McCollum and 2-5 thing, you know, like I said, I've been a person who has stressed the let's wait approach. You only get to do this once. Yes, the team is uncertain right now, but we're not a finished product. We are going to look much different in a couple months. And, you know, we need that piece. We need that piece. We saw it last night. We saw it this past week. We have been constantly reminded of it. Tobias Harris can't really be that number two guy. Tyrese Max, he's still young and trying to fit in with these guys. We need that other piece. We need another swingman or another star piece or somebody that can give us instantaneous buckets on this team. And I've said it the entire summer. I've gotten ripped for it every time. Daryl Morey has had his eye set. I'm telling y'all, man. If he's sitting here and I, you know, we've been talking about the trade and the playing field and what is available and everybody keeps, you know, getting on his neck because he's losing time and value and interest and all this stuff. Look, man, we have to trust in Daryl. We have to do this the right way because the honestly, our entire future hinges on it. It really does. Given where we're at as a, as a team and a franchise, Daryl has to get this right. And you know what? I've been constantly saying it, and I'm not even trying to pump my chest out here, but it's the truth. I have been saying it since after Game 7. Daryl goes for stars. He is a home run swinger. He wants to get the best player in here available. Now, I get it. There's not a lot of options, but as we will talk about soon, the market is starting to open up. But definitely interesting. And the Blazers probably looked at Dame and his agent and probably said, what? Are you crazy? 
for a guy who has been an issue and hasn't even shown up, hasn't even come to his team to play, how do we know that he's even improved this game? How do we know that he's in the right mind seat and all this stuff that we've been talking about? But anyway, going even further, the second piece you need to remember from this, shout out to Austin Krell who put it in a quote tweet here. This was a piece from the article, quote, Philadelphia made an offer, but New York never did. League sources said Lillard's reps offered mixed messages on the Stars' intentions to stay or go. Woj adds that three teams are lurking in the background waiting for him to ask for a trade this offseason. And then another piece here um, from my Twitter. Go follow me on Twitter right now. I put this on after watching uh, Woj go on ESPN earlier on NBA Today, and this is exactly what he said. Um, He pretty much said, The Blazers this past offseason really only got interest from the Sixers who called and and proposed an actual trade offer to them. He said that Daryl Morey and the Sixers called up the Blazers, but ex-GM Neil O'Shea was not interested in 2-5 and pretty much hung up the phone. And that was that, you know, and Dame Lillard obviously said he wanted to stay and, you know, it didn't really progress from there. Obviously now O'Shea is not with the team anymore. They have a new GM search going on here and things are about to get really spicy. Do they want to stay and stick with Lillard? Do they want to stay and stick with CJ McCollum? Do they want to stick with both of them? Do they want to blow it up and try to rebuild? Do they, you know, what do they do? Um, it's definitely an interesting question. We'll see what they do with a new GM. But going back to Austin Krell's point uh, from the article here, Philadelphia made an offer and the Knicks never did. You know what that means to me? Number one, Daryl Morey, like I said, is hungry. He wants it, he knows it, and he sees it. And like I have pretty much said the entire offseason, he is going to go for as big as he can. He wants that star piece. He sees the talent and the promise of Joel Embiid, and he wants to optimize the window. That's what it says to me. Number two, a lot of people have told me that Damian Lillard just doesn't seem interested in Philadelphia. That may be the case, And, and I never said that wasn't true. Who knows? Who knows? We haven't got to that point. But the fact that the Knicks didn't offer, they would be one of our biggest competitors. There'd be obviously a whole field of teams. But you could argue the Sixers have a good package of young assets that the Blazers could hypothetically uh, rebuild around if they were to move going forward. Maybe even keep McCollum or or whatever. You know, even maybe if they keep Dame and trade McCollum and it doesn't work out, then they still have young assets to move forward with if they go ahead and move the other. Um, it's definitely interesting, though. It really is interesting. Um But the fact that the Sixers have already generated interest and shown that, it it just shows me that Daryl Morey is hungry and he's actively trying to bring a star player in to Philadelphia as we had all hoped for. And he would, like like we said before, he was just waiting for him to request out. So all those reports were true. The last thing here that you want to keep in mind, which was kind of hinted at already, uh, Lillard wants a two-year, $107 million extension in July which would add on to his current contract already. And he and his agent uh, need the next general manager to sell ownership on the idea as much as anything. This cuts the core of the Blazers search process. So pretty much the Blazers as an organization need to decide what they are trying to do in terms of whether they want to retain Lillard, give him that max, you know, extension. And I know it's going to be a lot of money, which we'll talk about, but um, you know what, whoever they bring in, the ideology of that next GM is going to decide a lot for the team. And if we take a look at Dame's contract here, just a glimpse of it, you know, he's obviously under contract here for the next three seasons. And, you know, he wants a two-year max extension for $55.3 million a year. Now, at age 35 and 36, there's definitely a huge risk on that. There definitely is a huge risk. Adding that already on to $176 million, there's a risk on that. Now, I would say to keep in mind that At that point, you know, we're going to see players, some of these young studs get even bigger contracts than that because the average uh, annual salary cap continues to go up. And obviously these guys are going to keep making more money. So even though it does sound like a King's ransom now, you know, we do have to keep in mind that it's pretty much about the timing and when you get paid. At the same time, Damian Lillard right now is struggling with an injury. He's having the worst statistical year of his career. And obviously we learned that he's been playing through an ab injury from the Olympics and, you know, it's definitely been rough for him. And he's only getting older. And at ages, at ages 35 and 36, he wants even more, 55-plus a year. It's a lot of money. Do you do it? It's definitely a good question there. Um, but, yeah, you know, it, I mean, if the Sixers were able to maybe clear out 2-5 or Tobias as well, 
you know, they could hypothetically make room, but then would you have enough to upgrade your team? How would you be able to get some of these other skilled guys in? I just have a feeling that that Daryl Morey has always been that type of GM, and he wants to bring another big name in here. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Maybe he'll be satisfied if CJ McCollum was on the table. And obviously, we've heard the interest. Dame wants to play with 2-5. Maybe we could work that swap out. Even if we got CJ in a couple picks, maybe we could play CJ and go and, and you know flip those picks for another star. There's a lot we could do here. It's going to get interesting. CJ McCollum also commented on the Blazers' entire situation right here. It says, I didn't come here to tell you there's a lot of stuff going on. But yeah, there is. There's stuff going on every day, and I'm an effing human being. CJ McCollum sounds fed up. He's getting tired of hearing every day him and Dame splitting up and all this stuff. It's getting to these guys, man. It almost feels like McCollum's on his way out. Who knows at this point? Who knows? Another story today, the Pacers moving towards a rebuild, right? And that's what I wanted to close on. Essentially, the trade market is opening up. And for all those people that continue to come at us and me and other Sixers fans, like I said, patience is a virtue. Okay, Daryl Morey is waiting for the best opportunity to strike. You could argue he may miss out. He may. And then we'll have a serious conversation. But you know what? I'm putting my trust in the guy. I think he's going to get it done, whether it's Dane, whether it's another big player. The trade market is starting to develop. You're starting to see more guys and hear about more interests. And you know what? We got to make the best deal possible. We have to make what is going to, you know, develop us into a contender now and in the future and I trust him more to get it done. Those are just my thoughts. I want to hear from you down below in the comment section. Give me all your thoughts. Appreciate you guys so much for tuning in. Like always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will catch you on the next one, man. Peace. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect.